Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we are going to be performing a fundamental stock analysis of Archer Daniels Midland Company, ticker symbol ADM. The reason we're looking at Archer Daniels Midland today is because they are a dividend aristocrat and they're only two years away from becoming a dividend king if they keep increasing their dividend payments. So dividend aristocrats are companies that have increased the amount of dividends that they paid out consecutively for each of the past 25 years. And dividend kings are companies that have increased their dividends consecutively for 50 years. So Archer Daniels Midland has increased their dividend payments for each of the past 48 years. So if they're able to increase their dividends through 2024, they will qualify as a dividend king, which would put them in select company alongside other household names such as Procter & Gamble, Johnson & Johnson, and Coca-Cola. So there's the potential here that Archer Daniels Midland is an unsung company that has a historical track record and pedigree that would put it in the select company. So we're gonna be looking at the fundamentals of the company today to try to understand if they're gonna be able to keep increasing these dividends going forward. So ADM is trading for $85.75 per share. Over the past year, they are up 41%, so they have done quite well so far through the back half of 2021 and throughout 2022. Over three years, they're compounding at a rate of 28% annually. Over five years, that's 14.5% compounded annually. Over 10 years, this is about 12% compounded annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, ADM stock price has compounded at a rate of about 8% annually. In addition to these returns, they're currently paying out a dividend yield of 1.8%, which is slightly better than an S&P 500 ETF right now, and they paid dividends over this entire time. So that dividend yield would add to these returns over time. Currently, ADM is about $14 below their 52-week high, and they're just about $25 above their 52-week low. They are a large business. They have a $48 billion market cap. For background about the business, Archer Daniels Midland is a major producer of oil seeds, corn, wheat, and other agricultural commodities. Additionally, the company owns an extensive network of logistic assets to store and transport crops around the globe. ADM also runs a nutrition business that focuses on both human and animal ingredients. The company is also a large producer of corn-based sweeteners, starches, and ethanol. ADM also offers commodities merchant and brokerage services, as well as securities and cash margin, which are pledged to commodity exchange clearinghouses used as security under certain insurance arrangements. Archer Daniels Midland Company was founded in 1902 and is headquartered in Chicago, Illinois. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are going to be performing the select six analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Archer Daniels Midland, ADM, based off of their business fundamentals. This analysis will continue to evolve and improve over time. It's still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public as well. So with that said, let's get right into today's analysis. So starting off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the past five years to be above 14%. So the reasons for this are that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by looking for 14% here, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. Then in addition to this, over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is gonna return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are gonna be captured here by return on capital. So ADM has produced mid single digits return on capital over the past five years. Their returns have been increasing since 2019. They ended fiscal 2021 with about eight and a half percent return on capital. And over the last 12 months, their return on capital is just shy of 10%. Overall, in the last five years, ADM has produced about a 6% return on capital. So unfortunately, that is not only below that 14% mark we're looking for, it's also slightly below average, meaning that this is going to be an X to start off here on metric number one. Metric number two, here we're taking a high-level overview of the cash coming into the business. We want their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows to have grown over the past five years. So over this time, their revenues are up by about a third. Their earnings have also increased, slightly under doubling from 2017 to 2021. And their free cash flows went from being negative to now they have been positive, both in fiscal 2021 and over the last 12 months. So all three of these numbers are gonna be up here. And this is gonna be our first check on metric number two. Metric number three is gonna be building off of what we just learned in metric number two. 
Here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business and we're looking for earnings per share growth over the past five years. So their earnings are up over this time and their shares outstanding are about flat. So this means that their earnings per share are also going up over this time. This is gonna be another check here on metric number three. And so far we are two for three to start things off. Metric number four is gonna be very similar. Here we're looking for five year free cash flow per share growth. Again, because their shares outstanding are flat and their free cash flows are up over this time period, their free cash flows per share are gonna be up. It's good to see here that both these per share metrics are up in addition to their increasing their returns on capital. It's relatively easy for a company to be able to grow its per share metrics if they're willing to sacrifice and get a worse return on capital. ADM has been able to both increase the profitability of their business and achieve better returns on capital at the same time. So that's a sign that's great to see here even though their current returns on capital are just slightly a better than average. So this is another check here. And so far through four metrics, we've got three checks. Next up for metric number five, we want their net debt, which is long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that the company has produced over the past five years. So at the end of last year, ADM had $9.6 billion of net debt. Currently, they've added on to that and they have $11.5 billion of net debt. However, over the last five years, they've consumed $16.7 billion of free cash flow in their business. So looking at their cash flow statement here, we can see that their free cash flow was negative for a multitude of reasons. They had changes in accounts receivable, inventories, accounts payable, and in other net operating assets throughout various times in each of these years that they were consuming additional capital in their business. These are all areas that you would want to read through their reports, take a finer approach to really dig into the details here, as these were a lot of changes over a lot of different years here. So it does beg the question of what exactly was going on. And the only way that you're going to be able to learn more about that is to do your own homework and dig in deeper here. So even though they produced positive free cash flows last year and their last 12 months of free cash flow are positive, metric number five is going to be an X, as those changes in their cash flow statement ate away at the ton of the earnings that the business was bringing in. So our final metric, the big metric of them all, metric number six, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield above 5%. So if that's the case, that'll give us a slight risk premium to the risk-free rate of the 10-year treasury, which would potentially give us a reason to be interested in looking at the company in more depth. So we're using total enterprise value here because it is a more economically realistic picture of the company than market cap is alone. Total enterprise value is going to take into account both the company's market cap and their net debt position and provide us with an economic picture of the business that's more akin to ADM being a private enterprise. So currently they have a total enterprise value of $60.2 billion. As we learned over the past five years, they've actually been a net consumer of cash in their business. And over this time, they've done so at rates of return that were slightly below average. So this is really a lose-lose scenario for their business. And so this is an X here on metric number six. If we were to run the numbers here off of their last 12 months of free cash flow to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield, they produced $1.6 billion of free cash flow over the last 12 months. And so when we divide $1.6 billion of free cash flow by $60.2 billion of their total enterprise value, we are left with a current free cash flow yield of about 2.66%. So even there, their current free cash flow yield is below what the 10-year treasury is at right now. It doesn't look like there's any risk premium here for ADM at today's current prices. Here, we're taking a look at ADM's dividend profile. So ADM has been increasing their dividends for each of the past 48 years. However, it's very easy to make mistakes by blindly chasing dividend yield or dividend track records. Instead, you really want to take the time to look at a company's fundamentals to understand if that business is able to support their dividends with that company's free cash flows. So because of the changes that flowed through their cash flow statement, ADM has just supported their dividend in one of the past five years. Thankfully, that did come just last year. And over the last 12 months, they're also producing more cash flows than they're bringing in as dividends. So it does look like based off of the cash flows that they have currently, if they're able to continue those going forward, that the company will be able to keep increasing their dividend here. Keep in mind, it doesn't look like this dividend has a very high growth rate here. So even though they have a long and strong historical track record of dividend growth, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna be aggressive with their dividend growth. If the past is gonna help make an educated guess of the future here, 
it would look like they would keep growing their dividend pretty smallly and pretty incrementally year over year. Then finally here, we're using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for ADM. Free cash flow is really the lifeblood of any business and a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day, discounted back by some reasonable interest rate, is ultimately what the value of that company is going to be. Here we're starting with ADM's last 12 months of free cash flows coming in at just under $3 per share. Then if we add in their tangible book value and we project a growth stage for the business over the next 10 years with a growth rate of 6.55% plus a terminal stage for the 10 years out after that with a growth rate of 4%. So those growth rates are based off of the historical numbers that the business has been able to grow their cash flows at and our assumptions made based off of their past performance to help give us a baseline for the future. That doesn't necessarily mean that those are accurate and you have to confirm or disconfirm for yourself whether or not these should be applicable here. But if we're gonna go with these assumptions and you want a 10% rate of return on ADM going forward, then it looks like at today's current price of a little under $86 per share that the business does not have a margin of safety in it. It looks like you'd have to wait for the share price to come down to a little under $73 per share to be able to reasonably expect a 10% rate of return going forward based off of their past performance. Keep in mind that this rate of return would be including dividends and we would not be doubly counting dividends. At today's current prices, it looks like you could reasonably expect about a 6% rate of return going forward on ADM. Again, these are based off of historical growth assumptions for the business and their dividend payments would be included in this 6%. So keep in mind that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered financial and legal professionals. So in summary, Archer Daniels Midland ADM checks the box on two out of six metrics. We learned that even though currently they're producing above average returns on capital, Averaged out, they produce slightly below average returns on capital. They have grown revenues, earnings, and free cash flows in their business over the last five years, and they've kept their shares outstanding about flat. So their per share numbers are up at the same time that they're increasing their returns on capital. However, this company warrants a deeper look and a closer inspection of exactly what's been going on over the past five years. Because of a lot of changes that they've made to their cash flow statements, right now the business has more debt than their cash flows can reasonably support, and they've consumed quite a bit of free cash flow in their business over the last five years at below average rates of return. In addition to this, based off their current cash flows, it looks like the business is not offering a potentially attractive risk premium to the risk-free rate right now. But looking at the company's dividend profile, it's a reasonable expectation that they're going to be able to make it to be a dividend king and that they're going to be able to keep increasing their dividends going forward as long as they continue to be supported by their cash flows as they have been in the past year and a half. Then finally, using a discounted cash flow analysis of the business, we learned that at today's prices, based off of historical assumptions that you need to do your own homework on and understand if they're applicable for the company or not, that you could reasonably expect about a 6% rate of return, including dividends going forward on ADM currently, and that if instead you wanted a 10% rate of return, you would want to wait till the company's share price was down below $73 or so. So the last time it was there was just in January of this year. So if you're interested in the business, just be patient and wait for it to come to you. So again, this type of analysis is not financial advice. It is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered financial and legal professionals. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding of ADM as a company to help you understand whether it's worth your while to dig in and learn more by doing your own homework to research ADM here. If you're interested in learning more about ADM, I would highly recommend diving into the company's 10Ks to get a history of the business and a history of their operating performance. You'll be able to learn through those annual reports exactly what was going on behind the scenes in the company here that caused those changes to their cash flow statements. Management will also lay out the potential risks that the business is facing, and they'll provide commentary on the business and its operations, which can help you get a better sense of management's character and their competence, especially when it comes to capital allocation going forward. When you're done with that, I would also recommend reading through the company's 10 Qs 
and reading through the transcripts of some of their recent earnings calls to get a more real-time perspective of the company on a quarter-to-quarter -quarter basis. As a value investor, you ultimately want to research a business as if you're going to own 100% of it, and you can truly understand all of its ins and outs and understand what's important and what's not for the business, ultimately trying to come to understand the essence of the business, which will help you determine if there's a true margin of safety or not in the company. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Archer Daniels Midland Company, ticker symbol ADM. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about ADM with me today, and have a great day.